Today I messed up by staying in touch with my psych ward friend. A few months ago, I was in a youth psych ward due to depression. I met a girl who would always listen and be super nice to me, but also tell me unsettling things, like having abused animals in her childhood, being able to turn her empathy off, wanting to unalive her parents and stuff like that. I was bored and depressed, thrilled by this unique friendship, and thinking nothing of it since we were both locked away. However, soon after my release, she successfully contested her court order and was discharged against medical advice. We continued to text after that. I realized that I was the only person she could confide in and felt bad for her. She would tell me about how bad she was doing and about her unaliving thoughts. Until one day, she sent a voicemail telling me how she was planning a whole rampage to unalive all the people that had wronged her. Alarmed, I went to the police who, after questioning me, paid her a visit. They called me and said that they didn't think she was a danger at all and was probably just angry when saying that. Naturally, she concluded that it was me who had betrayed her, but I tried my best to convince her it had probably been by my parents who had checked my phone and reported it, and at least she pretended to believe me. Fast forward to today. I suddenly noticed a photo that she had sent without any context. When I clicked on it, my jaw dropped. It showed her posing with bloody hands and face, a lighter in her hand, and a burning stove in the background. I concluded the worst and went to the police ASAP. After further questioning, they told me that they had already known about it and that she had caused a decent fire in an apartment block and smashed some windows after a fight with her parents. Fortunately, no one besides her was hurt. They thanked me for providing them with further proof and told me that she would probably go back to the psych ward. When I left the interview room, I honestly couldn't believe my eyes when I saw her, sitting in the hallway, looking at the door. Our gaze met and I think we were equally shocked before I quickly walked away. I feel like I'm in deep trouble. Eventually, she'll be released again and there's no denying that I snitched on her. Am I in the wrong for telling my sister to accept her daughter is white? Both me, 33 female, and my sister, 27 female, are Caucasian Latinas. However, she's always been more tan than me, a fact that she's always been very proud of. For reference, my skin tone is close to Aubrey Plaza's while hers is closer to Gina Rodriguez. When we were younger, she would constantly talk about how European I looked compared to her, how my hair looked more blonde than brown, which no one ever agreed with, and how certain colors I liked looked awful on me due to my skin tone. I almost never said anything because I was six years older and had better things to do. Also, while I did have many insecurities, I never doubted that I was beautiful. Fast forward to now, we both have kids. My husband is a little more tan than me, and both our children, 8 male and 3 female, have the same skin tone as their father. My sister's ex and baby daddy, however, was a very pale Swiss guy. My niece, 5 female, is a fair-skinned girl with dark blonde hair, while my daughter is more tan and has dark brown hair. Everyone agrees that both girls are beautiful, but their skin tones have always bugged my sister. She insists that both girls are equally tan, that her daughter's hair is light brown, and that my daughter spends too much time in the sun. Last weekend, we were all at a dinner party at my father's place. My son brought his notebook and drew pictures of everyone at the table. He colored my daughter's skin darker shade than my niece. For example, orange for my daughter, light pink for my niece. He also gave my niece yellow hair and colored my daughter's hair black. He lost his brown pencil. When he showed us the drawings, my sister frowned. She said he was exaggerating his cousin's features and that he could at least make her hair darker. When my niece said that she loved the drawing, my sister told her it looked nothing like her and insisted my son was doing this on purpose. Before the kids could get upset, I pulled my sister aside and told her that she was being ridiculous. We had a very small fight in the next room. Near its end, I said something along the lines of, Listen to me, your daughter is white. We're all white. You need to accept that and stop comparing the girls if you don't want niece's name to become insecure. We left shortly afterwards and none of the kids have brought anything up again. My sister is pissed at me. She told both of our divorced parents about our fight. Our father thinks that I shouldn't have commented on my niece's appearance and wants me to apologize to my sister. Our mom thinks that this is dumb, but says that my sister is overreacting. Am I in the wrong? Am I in the wrong for not doing anything for my stepchildren anymore after being called names and filing for divorce from my husband after he didn't back me up? I, 30 female, have been married to my husband, 34 male, for six years, and he has twins, a boy and a girl, and they're 16 now. When we started dating, got married, we went to family therapy, and I made it clear that I was not trying to be their mother or replace their mother. Their mother hasn't been in their life since they were about eight. Things have been great with us these past six years. They even started calling me mom when they were around 12 to 13. Recently, their bio mother came back into their lives, and they were really excited. Things were great for about six months and then they started calling me by my real name. That hurt, but it's what they chose to do and I never questioned it. Recently, they've been getting very disrespectful. They don't follow the curfew rules, they're not cleaning up after themselves, they're talking back to me, telling me that I'm not their real mom, that I'm the reason she left, which is not true. I didn't meet him until almost a year and a half after she left. That now she's back, they don't need me anymore. Three weeks ago, there was a big blow up where my stepson called me a bitch. I took his phone and told him to go to his room until his dad came back, but instead, he ran out and went to his mom's. She came over and it was a big argument. She tried to hit me and I pushed her out of my house. My stepdaughter told me if I ever put hands on her mom again, then she'd kick my ass. They both went to their mom's place. After that, I haven't been very active. I usually take them to sports and activities. I didn't wake them up for school, so they've been late a few times. I tell them to have their mom wake them up and take them. We were supposed to go to Disney World for their spring break this week, but I canceled everything. I told them and my husband, and I guess they thought I was bluffing. We were, we were supposed to leave in the middle of the week, and when I didn't start the usual vacation roundup, they were shocked. 
They started saying that I was jealous of their mom came back in their lives and I'm a horrible person. I'm selfish. There was some name calling and my husband was silent. I asked him if he was going to step in and he said I was wrong for canceling. I left and went to stay at a hotel. He's been blowing up my phone asking me to come back and yesterday he told me that their mother disappeared again and they've been calling me and crying and apologizing. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't feel like I'm part of their family and they can't just cry and come back now after she disappeared. I told my husband that I want a divorce and I'll be back over this week to get my things but we have nothing to talk about. Yes, I know their mother was manipulating them. I never said otherwise. Yes, they're 16, but that doesn't give them a right to treat me this way. Being 16 doesn't mean you get to be disrespectful and threaten me. I've always been in their corner. I know their feelings matter in this, but I'm also a person with feelings. I'm not only considering or moving forward with this divorce based on how the children acted, it's also how my husband didn't back me up. If I can't count on him to help me navigate this tough situation, then why should I stay? That does not mean that I should be treated the way that I was treated. This is not normal 16-year-old behavior. To threaten me? Call me vile names? I just need time for myself and I don't want an apology just because their bio mom ran out on them again. I want an apology because they really mean it and I don't believe anyone can be truly sorry two days after their mother vanished again. I would never just abandon them, but I do need time for myself because my feelings were disregarded. So, am I in the wrong? Am I wrong for not inviting my twin sister on holiday with me and my boyfriend? Story time. So my family are all from the UK. My boyfriend Steve's family are from Japan. Steve's dad is from Japan. Steve's mum is from the UK. And Steve spent 12 years over in Japan before he moved over to the UK. So Steve goes over once a year to see all of his other family. And I was asked if I would like to go with him this year. We're going in April and this will be for our one year anniversary. So of course I said yes, who is turning down a trip to Japan? I've never left the country before and I would love to meet his family. And Steve's family very, very generously offered to pay for me as like our anniversary present. I don't know how, but my twin sister and her boyfriend found out about the trip and thought that they were coming with us. We got that from them. They also thought that their two kids would be coming too. And I was like, yeah, that that's, that's not gonna happen. To which they got very, very angry at me. It wasn't up to me to invite anyone considering I was a guest. And if it was, I still wouldn't be inviting all of my family when I'm meeting his family for the first time. My sister's boyfriend is a massive weeb and is obsessed with Japanese culture. The first thing he said when he met my boyfriend was, I can speak Japanese, and then continued to embarrass himself for the next 10 minutes. But my sister Amy is getting more and more wound up. She's chatting about how she'd do the same for us, even though they literally didn't last time they went on holiday. The guilt tripping has not been working though. So now they've turned to talking bad about me and my boyfriend to the rest of the family. Still unsure as how my boyfriend has been brought into this, but here we are. And now my whole family is taking their side. I think I should just let it go and just invite them. So do I bring them along or do I stand my ground? Am I wrong for calling my friend fake after she had plastic surgery and filler? Story time. So me and my boyfriend Steve broke up around five months ago. We had been together for literally like five, six years. Steve was literally the love of my life. Steve is literally the most amazing guy ever and I, I just love this guy so much. And I've literally been having the worst time of my life since we broke up. Steve is very, very handsome and very successful. He's also rich, which is very relevant. Keep that in mind. So I'm sure you can imagine that Steve is not going to have any issues finding his next girlfriend. So when we broke up, I asked for a clean break. I wanted no contact. I just knew that this was the only way I was going to get over Steve. So obviously my friends know all about this and they know how much I still very much love him. However, one of my friends, who I'll call Amy, has recently been joking about how Steve is back up for grabs again and she is buzzing about this. This was literally like a month after we broke up. Read the room, Amy. I ignored her and I just took it as a bad joke, bad timing. Amy is literally a 10 out of 10. I'm talking supermodel vibes. She can basically get whatever she wants. And she always brags about how she has never been rejected by a man, ever. Must be nice. I know that Steve would never go for her. He was never really into like the filler, surgery thing. Amy has had surgery. She's had Botox, filler, like lip, cheek, nose, chin. She's had the girls done. And then she's recently just come back from Turkey and had a BBL. Last time I went out for dinner, she brought up the fact that she wanted to date Steve. But one of my friends shot that down immediately and was like, we don't do that to each other. Amy just laughed it off. But at this point, I was kind of done with all the insensitive jokes. So I was like, hon, you are more than welcome to try. He just would not go for you. And she had the audacity to turn around to me and be like, well, I can literally get whoever I want. What makes you think I can't? And at this point, I snapped. And this might be where I'm in the wrong. I turned around and was like, oh, Steve isn't into fake girls like you. He doesn't like girls that have pumped their face with filler and have silicone implants scattered throughout her body. 
And then, as if that wasn't enough, I then went on to say, and he also doesn't like girls that are just with him for his money. That was when she started crying. She stormed out of the restaurant and was like, well, now I won't feel sorry for taking him. And of course, my friends have all sided with her. I waited until I got in my car to start crying. She literally was whining me up about this for months. So what do you think? Am I wrong here? Am I wrong for yelling at my boyfriend for making me leave my best friend's wedding? My boyfriend, 27, and I, 26, have been together for two years. He's a good at heart and is normally rational, but his one issue is that he expects to accompany me in every occasion, no matter how big or small. He even went with me to my ex-boyfriend's funeral after days of begging. Oh God, no. Am I wrong for yelling at my boyfriend for making me leave my best friend's wedding? My boyfriend, 27, and I, 26, have been together for two years. He's a good at heart and is normally rational, but his one issue is that he expects to accompany me in every occasion, no matter how big or small. He even went with me to my ex-boyfriend's funeral after days of begging. Oh God. Now, my best friend got married a few days ago. It was a very small and only close family and friends were invited. My boyfriend couldn't come because of the plus one rule. He pitched a hissy fit saying my best friend has no respect for my relationship and was shocked when he learned that I was still going to attend. He told me that if he can't go, I'm expected to not go as well, but that is my best friend and I had to respect her rules. He gave me an ultimatum, either we go together or I stay home with him. I ended up going because again, I respected my friend's rule. He was angry with me and kept calling the entire two hour drive and then stopped. Later, I got a text from his friend telling me that my boyfriend got into an accident and was taken to the hospital. I freaked out and he gave me the address and I had to leave the wedding and told my friends why. I was crying the entire drive home and kept calling his friends but got no response. I arrived at the hospital and asked my boyfriend and they checked and told me he wasn't there. My anxiety reached 110% as I kept calling his friends one by one. I just went home and there he was along with his friend. He saw me and said that he was sorry but this was the only way he could get me home after I left him alone. After the initial shock, I just blew up yelling at him about lying and making me leave my friend's wedding and having me literally go to the hospital and freaking out because of him. I kicked his friend out and we got into an argument. He kept talking about how much I love him, but I still left, which is my own doing and not his. And he was just trying to see if I really chose my friend's wedding over him. He then argued that my friend caused this and I shouldn't agree with her to exclude him. I said what he did was horrible and called him horrible and then went to my room. It was awful because my friends kept calling to check in on him because they thought he was really at the hospital. He said I overreacted and that I yelled at the wrong person. Am I the asshole? 